Okay, welcome back. So we're going to be looking at the 2023 Home Economics DESE questions. So we're going to practice them and get the correct answers so it can get you prepared for your exams. Now, let's look at the first question we have here. A stable vegetable dye widely used in Africa is... We have A, acid, B, we have basic, C, we have indigo, D, we have mordant, E, we have sulfur. Now, which of these is a stable vegetable that, that is widely used in Africa? Now, the answer here is indigo. Indigo is a stable vegetable dye that is widely used in Africa. Now, you've heard of tie and dye. Now, when they do that, what they use is the indigo to do that. You know, it gives you this purplish color or violet color and then, you know, makes your clothes look beautiful. Now, the answer is indigo for that question. Now, a baby is usually made to belch at the end of. A baby is usually made to belch at the end of A, birthing, B, coughing, C, feeding, D, vomiting, E, yawning. Now, what does it mean to belch? You burp the baby so the baby can do what belch. That way it helps the baby to what, digest the food properly because at that point in time, they can't do that on their own. So you just help by patting the back of the baby until the baby what burps and belches. Now, why do they do that or when do they do that? Is it after baiting the baby or when the baby coughs or after feeding, vomiting or yawning? Now the correct answer is C, feeding. After feeding a baby, you put the baby to your um, chest, the shoulder pad, and then you keep patting the baby at the back and then the baby verge. It's also called bop. Now, so that is what happens when after feeding a baby, allowing the baby to belch, you know, her it's what easy digestion of the food sometimes if they don't get to do that they become very very uncomfortable and until they get to build not see them relaxed so let's look at the next question frequent consumption of starchy foods without regular exercise can lead to a we have arthritis b we have berry berry c we have catroca d we have obesity e we have rickets Rickets. Now, frequent consumption of starchy foods without regular exercise can lead to C is the correct option, which is quattroco. Now, when you eat too much of um, starchy food, you know, it's not a balanced diet. It's not a balanced diet. So what would happen is that one is going to have the def um, deficiency of what? You know, protein and other nutrients that are needed for proper growth. And then you're not exercising. So kwashoko is the result of not eating the right food or in the frequent consumption of starchy foods without regular exercise. Okay, so kwashoko C is the correct answer to that question. Now we have a diagram here. Now it says the article represented in the diagram below is used for now this diagram here, what does it look like? What is it? I'm sure you know what it looks like or what it is. Now, A, we have cleaning hands. B, we have cleaning plates. C, lifting hot pot from fire. D, protecting clothes. E, wiping sweat off the face. Now, what is this thing called? It looks like an apron, right? You know it by the name apron. Okay, yes, that's what it is. Now, it is used for protecting our clothes. Apron is used for protecting our clothes. So protecting clothes is the correct answer. When you put on your apron, it helps prevent, you know, slashes from food or spillages from whatever you're preparing in the kitchen. So the apron protects your clothes from what stains. So that's what that diagram that you see there is for, and which is called an apron. Let's look at the next question. Lime juice is an example of A slash N. A, we have abrasive. B, we have acidic cleaner. C, we have alkaline cleaner. D, we have colorant. E, we have detergent. Lime juice is an example of what? 
Is he an abrasive? Is he an acidic cleaner? Is he an alkaline cleaner? Is he a colorant? E or a detergent? Now, lime juice is an acidic cleaner. B. Now, because of the citric content, um, content of lime, it can be used to um, take off minor or sometimes major stains in our clothing. So, lime juice is an example of an acidic what? cleaner. So, B is the correct answer to that question. Acidic cleaner. Lime juice is an example of an acidic cleaner. Now, which of the following activities should be done before eating fresh fruits? Which of the following activities should be done before eating fresh fruits? A, we have boil for a short time. B, we have chill in the fridge. C, we have soak in vinegar. D, we have squeeze to remove peel. E, we have wash thoroughly. Now, what do you have to do before you eat fruits? Do you have to boil them for a short while? Of course not. Do you have to chill in the fridge? Yes, you could chill in the fridge, but that's not what you should do at first. Soak in vinegar, of course not. Squeeze to remove peel, no. Now, the correct answer to that question is wash thoroughly. When you get fruits, you need to do what? Wash the debris, dirty from the fruits. You don't just pick fruits and then you start eating it. You don't know where they are coming from, from where they have stayed and all of that. So when you get fresh fruits, the first thing you should do is to do what? Wash thoroughly before you start eating them, okay, to avoid contamination and to, to um, also prevent ill health by contacting, you know, um, an infection by eating dirty fruit. So you have to wash what? Thoroughly. Now, the table where represented below is, the table where represented below is, now there's a, there's a diagram here. Now, what is it used for? Okay, or the question says, the table where represented below is best wiped with a, okay, what do you use in wiping this diagram here? This looks like a glass cup, right? Okay, so what um, table wear, what cloth, you know, what cloth can you use in wiping this? Okay, that's what the question is, says. Now, A, you have dish cloth, B, um, glass cloth, C, we have hand glove, D, we have hand towel, E, we have tea cloth. Now, what can you use to wipe this um, table where you find here? Which of these options is suitable for you to use in wiping it. Um, the correct answer here is B, glass cloth. Now, dish cloth is used for dish Why you have your hand glove. Hand glove, of course, is one to get um, the hand safe from dirty and also to get things from the oven most times. Your hand towel, hand towel is used to wipe surfaces or to use in cleaning the hands. And then tea cloth is used to clean your tea cups and all of that. So the correct answer is B, the glass cloth is best used to wipe this table where you see represented here. Now, the next question says, a substance used to prevent body odor caused by perspiration. A substance used to prevent body odor caused by perspiration. A, we have cream. B, we have deodorant. C, we have lotion. D, we have powder. E, we have soap. Now, which of these options is correct? Now, to prevent body odor. When you talk about body odor, that means something oozing that doesn't smell good, you know, caused by perspiration, sweating when you sweat. Now, what can we use to do or to prevent such, you know, offensive smell from uh, our body. Now, cream is applied on the body, good and fine. Lotion is applied on the body. Powder is also applied as a cosmetic used for the face. Soap is also um, one of the items used for the body. But to prevent body odor caused by perspiration, deodorant is what is used. So the correct answer is B. Deodorant is a substance used to prevent um, body odor caused by perspiration. So when you use your deodorant, you help curb the, you know, the smell from, you know, perspiration when you sweat. Let's look at the next question. The risk of foodborne disease 
diseases can be prevented by the risks of foodborne diseases can be prevented by a drinking untreated water b preparing food with rusted utensils c storing food in contaminated equipment d storing fresh meat at room temperature e washing leafy vegetables with salted water okay now the risks of foodborne diseases can be prevented by how can you prevent foodborne diseases is it by drinking untreated water of course no you're not preventing it you're actually going to get it worse preparing food with rusted utensils of course now storing food in contaminated um equipment it's going to get worse storing fresh meat at room temperature of course that's not um one way to prevent um foodborne disease now another the our last option we have here is washing living vegetables with salted water now that is the correct answer washing leafy vegetables with salted water that's one way to prevent foodborne disease just like we said earlier washing our food thoroughly before we eat them same thing is applicable to your vegetables okay to prevent foodborne disease you have to wash leafy vegetables with with um salted water you know you put salt in the water and wash them we do that one want to do our um, cabbage our carrot and all of that maybe when we're making a, a salad so or your coleslaw so you have to put a little bit of salt to um to wash it so as to prevent foodborne disease the next question says a substance used to brighten white clothes during laundry is we have a bleach b we have blue C, we have detergent. D, we have soap. E, we have starch. Now, I'm sure a whole lot of persons will pick bleach as the correct answer to that question. But no, that's not the correct answer. Yes, bleach whitens a cloth, but um, it doesn't brighten as it's supposed to. Now, the correct answer to that question is blue. A whole lot of us do not know it. Okay, now blue is a substance that is used to that is applied on our white clothes after washing them you know it gives us this bluish and very distinct effect of white in our eyes you know so blue is um, a substance used to brighten white clothes during laundry okay it's i i think i usually will not see it around most times but people still use it it's still around so blue is that substance that is used to brighten white clothes during laundry A material used for advertisement is A, we have handbook, B, we have invoice, C, we have daughter, D, we have ledger, and E, we have magazine. Now, a material used for advertisement, what do we use for advertisement? If you want to do, you know, to advertise your products, you know, which is best suitable? Is it a handbook? Is it an invoice, a daughter, a ledger, or a magazine? Now, the correct option is the magazine. Now, magazines are used to what to advertise products. People put up spaces there and advertise their products, their businesses. So, magazine is a material used for advertisement. Now, your handbook has to do the invoice, so for recording, and then you know, um, saving informations for this other ones. But magazine is basically used for what advertisement. People put up pro their products and other business concept there for people to see now which of the following is a healthy eating habit which of the following is a healthy eating habit a we have chew food properly b we have cut large portion at a time c we have eat food quickly d we have pick food with knife e we have read while eating now which of these is a healthy eating habit do we have to chew our food properly? Yes. Now, this is the correct answer. Chew food properly. This is a healthy eating habit. You have to chew your food properly when you're eating. Now, these other options here, of course, they are not good healthy eating habits. Cutting large portion at a time. Of course, no. You're going to get choked on your food. Eat food quickly. No, that's not okay as well. You're going to get choked also because you're 
brushing, and it's not going to get digested um, easily or fast. And that one is pick food with knife. You don't do that. You don't pick your food with knife when eating with your cutleries. You use the fork to pick or your spoon. And also read while eating. That's not a healthy eating habit, okay? You can't be reading and eating, okay? You could get it into somewhere else and it's not healthy for you. So the correct answer here is what? Chew food properly. Chew, take your time, chew, and then swallow. That's one healthy eating habit. Now, which of the following fasteners is suitable for a baby's diaper? Which of the following fasteners is suitable for a baby's diaper? A, we have button. B, we have fresh stored. C, we have roller loop. D, we have Velcro. E, we have zipper. Now, which of these is suitable? A suitable fastener for uh, a baby's diaper. Now, babies are fragile, so you have to be very, very, you know, considerate of what they have and what they put on. Now, Vecron is the correct answer here. This is very suitable for baby diapers, fasteners. You know, you just get to remove and put it back. We get to see it in uh, regular diapers, okay? Now, mostly they use it because it's not, you know, it doesn't need you to stress. You just lock up and then you take it out. So, Vecron is um, a suitable fastener that is used for baby diapers. Now, which of the following is a good marketing principle? Which of the following is a good marketing principle? A, always sell in bulk. B, fix prices at random. C, make packaging unattractive. D, offer credit facilities to all customers. E, provide label on all products. Now, which of these is um, a good marketing principle? All of these options that are listed here, is it always to sell in bulk? That's not a good marketing principle. Fixed prices at random, no. Every day you change your prices, that's not a good marketing principle. People will run away from you because they'll be like, oh, you go there today, a different price. You go there tomorrow, a different price. Of course, people won't come back. Now, the next one is make packaging unattractive. If you do that, people won't buy your product, so it's not advisable. It's not a principle, a good marketing principle. Offer credit facilities to all customers. You don't want to make profit if you do that, so it's not advisable. E, provide label on all products. Now, E is the correct answer to that question. Now, this is a good marketing principle. When you provide label on all your products, people will have to you know, want to make more inquiries. Everything is listed out there. They look at what they want. They get all the information they need by looking at the products because it is well labeled. So you have to make, uh, that's a good marketing principle, labeling all the products you know, um, effectively so people can read up and know what they are buying and then what the contents are or what the substances used are in the product they are purchasing. So E is the correct answer. Provide label on all products. Unhealthy feeding habit among children can lead to increase in unhealthy feeding habits can, in children can lead to increase in. Now, when children don't eat healthy, you know, we said we talked about healthy and unhealthy um, feeding practices. Now, unhealthy feeding practices among children can lead to increase in A, we have deficiency diseases, B, we have digestion risk, C, we have physical activities, D, we have physical growth, E, we have reasoning abilities, reasoning abilities. So, A is what deficiency disease. Now, when you don't eat healthy, of course, you're going to go down with deficiency diseases such as maybe Koshoko, Marimos, Kovi, and then a whole, whole lot of these other um, deficiency disease because you're not eating the right nutrients. You're not feeding the body with what it's needed. So children would um, actually go down with deficiency diseases when they are not fed with the right um, nutrients. So unhealthy feeding habits among children can lead to increase in deficiency disease. Now, A is the correct answer, A. 
when a piece of fabric is attached to a garment for decorative purposes, it is referred to as A, we have applique, B, we have finishing, C, we have knitting, D, we have patching, E, we have renovation. Now, when it has to do with fabric, you know, to make it look beautiful, you know, add some patches to make it look beautiful decor for decorative purposes anyway, you know, that is referred to as what applique. A is the correct answer. This is when you put a piece of fabric, you could design it into any kind of design you want, and then you put it on your garment. It's basically used for decorative purpose, and that is referred to as applique. Let's move on to the next question. Now, we have a diagram here. Now, take a close look at this diagram. It said the dots marked S in the diagram below is used for now this has to do with basic pattern drafting you know i said these are some of the questions that show up so this has to do with that topic now if you're not familiar with it you might not really understand what this is now the dot mark s in the diagram below is used for does this s what is it used for a we have binding raw edges b we have bounding openings c we have controlling fullness d we have matching seams then e we have neatening raw edges now this that that is marked s in the diagram is used for d is the correct answer matching seams to match seams when making clothing now that is what the s in the diagram is used for to match seam let's look at this question a light refreshment that is served in between meals is a light refreshment that is served in between meals is A, we have breakfast, B, we have brunch, C, we have lunch, D, we have snack, E, we have supper in between meal. What's the light refreshment that is served in between meal called? Is it breakfast, is it brunch, lunch, snack, or supper? Now, the correct answer is what? Snack. Snack. Um, snack is served in between meals. You know, after you've had your breakfast, maybe you know before it gets to brunch or lunch, you just take you know something to keep you busy, chewing and all of that. So it is referred to as what snack. Snack is the correct answer. A child's birth weight doubles at what month? A child's birth weight doubles at a. We have two months. B, we have four months, C, we have six months, D, we have eight months, E, we have 12 months. Now, when a child is born, they tend to weigh, you know, not too big and not too, you know, just normal for some of them. Now, but as they tend to grow, as they eat, their birth weight doubles at a period of time or a certain month. And which is that time? Is there two months, four months, six months, eight or 12. Now this happens to be at six months. So C is the correct answer. At six months, a child's birth weight doubles. It doubles from what it used to be. Maybe the, the birth weight maybe was 2.5 or 3.5 for bigger babies, 4.5. But at six months, it doubles. By the time the child gets to um, six months, it could be eight point. It doubles from what it used to be to, you know, something else because the child is growing. So at six months, a child's birth weight, you know, doubles. Now let's look at this question. The presence of dash in food reduces its quality. The presence of dash in food reduces its quality. A, we have colorant. B, we have mold. C, we have salt. D, we have seasoning. E, we have water. The presence of dash in food reduces its quality. Now, is it colorant? We add colorant to our food most times. Mold, mold is harmful to the health and our body. So mold is the answer to that question. It reduces the quality of food. When molds begin to grow on your food, you know when you buy your bread and you keep it for a period of time and maybe you, you're not eating it, you begin to see this greenish um, growth on the bread. These are molds, even on our food, okay? It reduces the quality. Sometimes some persons will take that part off and still eat it. But 
it has already reduced the quality of the food that you're eating. So more, the presence of mold in food reduces its quality. Of course, salt does not reduce the quality of our food, rather it improves the quality of our food. Seasoning does not reduce, rather it increases. Water, very essential for us, so it doesn't reduce the quality in our food. So mold is the substance that reduces the quality of our food. Now we have a diagram here as well. Now the sewing tool represented below is used for, what does this um, sewing tool, what is it used for? A, we have cutting different fabrics. B, we have finishing edge of fabrics. C, we have ripping unwanted stitches. D, we have body measurements. E, we have transferring pattern marks. So this um, diagram here, I'm sure you're familiar with it, okay? It looks like something you've seen, something you've held, and something, if you've not held, something you've seen someone use. Now, it is used for what? Cutting fabrics when you're sewing. It's a sewing tool. You used to cut fabrics, okay? Now, that is your scissors. It is used for cutting different fabrics for sewing. So that is the correct answer. The next question here says, food preparation should be handled properly to A, increase moisture content, B, increase pest infestation, C, prevent poisoning, D, reduce palatability, E, reduce shelf life. Now, food preparation should be handled properly because of what? Is it to increase the moisture content? Is it to increase pest infestation? Is it to prevent poisoning? Is it to reduce palatability or to reduce the shelf life? Now, the answer to this question is C, to prevent poisoning. Food preparation should be handled properly. If you do not handle the process of food preparing properly, it would cause poisoning. Okay, so you have to handle it properly to prevent food poisoning, which can be harmful to the health of the people that are going to consume the food. So C is the correct answer. Which of the following materials is safe for packaging meals? Which of the following materials is safe for packaging meals? Which of the following materials is safe for packaging meals. A, we have animal skin. B, we have green leaf. C, we have kitchen tissue. D, we have old newspaper. E, we have ungalvanized metal. Now, animal skin, no, not suitable for packaging meals. Green leaf, green leaf is suitable. We've seen people, we've seen, um, seen us use uh, cocoyam leaves, uh, plantain leaves as um, materials used for packaging foods, maybe to make our moi moi, you know, our rice when we do our further rice and all of that. So green leaf is a safe um, material used for packaging meals. It's safe. Um, old newspaper can be used, but not healthy. It's not healthy. Kitchen tissue, tissue, not healthy as well. So green leaf is the material that is safe for packaging meals. Green leaf. Torn edges of knitted fabrics can be mended by torn edges of knitted fabrics can be mended by doing what? A by cutting, D by darning, C patching, D printing, E waxing. Now the correct answer to that question is darning. Darning. When you have torn edges of knitted fabrics, you can mend it by darning. You can use a thread and needle to do that, or most times you can use a sewing machine. But the answer to that question is tanning. Tanning is what you use to mend torn edges in knitted fabrics. Okay, let's look at this question. Detergent is for clothes, as shampoo is for hair. I'm sure you know that. That's the correct answer, hair. So, um, 
detergent is used for washing our clothes to keep our clothes neat. Then shampoo is used for grooming and taking care of the hair. So um, B is the correct answer. Hair. Shampoo is for hair, to wash the hair and to keep the hair neat. Now let's look at this question. You have to look at it carefully so you don't mix it up. Now arrange in sequential steps the following reasons for visiting a hospital when sick. Arrange in sequential steps the following reasons for visiting a hospital when sick. The first um, number numeric I we have here is get doctor's prescription. Two, buy drug from pharmacy. Three, find the cause of symptoms. Um, four here, take the drug in appropriate, you know, in, ap in appropriate um, prescription, the way they've prescribed it for you. Now, how do you, you have to arrange this in sequential um, steps. So the first one here, you need to do what? When you're not feeling okay, and then when you visit the hospital, you need to do what? Find the cause of what? The symptom, why are you feeling the way you're feeling? You need to find out for you to know what exactly the problem is. Maybe you could be referred to run a test and, you know, to ascertain what the problem is. Then the next thing you should do after finding the cause of the symptoms is get doctor's prescription. Okay, you have to now go to the doctor and say, oh, see, this is what I found out. This is what is wrong with me. I did the test or these are my symptoms. I feel like this, I feel feverish without running a test. So you go to the doctor and the doctor tells you, oh, this is the problem. You get doctor's prescription. That's three, one. Then the next thing to do is buy drug from pharmacy. So at this point, the doctor would have written out the prescription for you to go get the drugs so you can buy them and take them. So you go to a pharmacy, you buy the drugs from the pharmacy. Then the next step you're going to apply is to take the drugs appropriately. You're going to take the drugs appropriately. So the correct answer, which of these fits are sequence? Okay, it's not I, 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 I. So the one that suits these um, steps that we should take is D, okay? Three, find the cause of symptoms. Then you go back to the doctor to get the doctor's prescription. Then you're going to buy drugs from the pharmacy. Then finally, you're going to take the drugs in um, appropriate prescription or you take them appropriately. When they prescribe the drugs for you, you have to now do what? Take them appropriately. So D is the correct answer after you've arranged them, sequen after you've arranged them sequentially. Okay, so D is the correct answer. The most suitable fabric for hot weather is the most suitable fabric for hot weather is A we have acetate, B we have cotton, C we have linen, D we have silk, E we have wool. Now which of these fabric is suitable for hot weather? When the weather is hot and then everywhere is hot, what should you really wear? You know these fabrics have their 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 peculiarities. The reasons why we wear them and how they are suitable for the different weathers. So which of these is suitable for, which of the fabric is suitable for hot weather? Now go through it, go through it. Some of them are animal fibers, some of them are from plants. Okay, so take note of this. Now, which of these is suitable? Cotton. Cotton is a very suitable fabric when the weather is hot. Okay, um, it gives you this cooling effect and it absorbs sometimes the heat that comes from uh, sweating and all of that. So cotton is a very suitable fabric when the weather is hot. So cotton is the correct answer. The act of making a choice from alternative causes of action is known as the act of making a choice from alternative causes of action is known as a, we have action taking. B, we have decision making. C, we have price listing. D, we have resource selection. E, we have wish listing. Now, which of these is the act of making a choice from alternative causes? Now, you have options to choose from. What is that referred to as? It is referred to as what? Decision making. Action taking is not. Okay, action taking will be like, okay, you already found out what is wrong and you're taking an action. Now, decision making is where you have options. You have 
alternative, a choice to make. Now, this is where decision making, you have to come up with, oh, what should I do at this point in time? So decision making is the act of making a choice from alternative causes of action. So that's the correct answer. B is the correct answer. Decision making. Decision making is the correct answer. The presser foot of a sewing machine helps to A, hold fabric tight, B, hold the bobbin case, C, increase the length of fabric, D, prevent thread from twisting, E, pull fabric along for stitching. Now, all of these is, is a very, very important for you to know when it comes to sewing, okay? So you have to get um, familiar with the sewing machine. The sewing machine is something you need to get familiar with. Now, what does the presser foot do? What does it help to do? The presser foot helps hold fabric tight when you're sewing. That's what the presser foot does. It helps to hold the fabric tight. Let's look at the next question. The most suitable food for a healthy baby of um, between zero to six months of age is dash milk. What is the most suitable food for a healthy baby um, between the ages of zero to six months? What milk should be given to that baby? Is it almond milk? Should he give the baby breast milk? Should he give the baby coconut milk? Um, D, condensed milk. C, soy milk. Which of these milk is important um, for a baby? of zero to six months of age. Good, you're looking at me, I know you know the answer. Yes, B is the correct answer, breast milk. Breast milk is very suitable for babies between the ages of zero to six months. They can take that exclusively without taking water or anything because it's very, very good for them at that age. Now after six months, it can now inculcate them, they can now transit to eating um, more solid food, you know, not living at the breast milk as well, but exclusively it is suitable for them to take breast milk from zero to six months. Let's look at the next question. A period in child development that marks the beginning of sexual maturity is a period in child development that marks the beginning of sexual maturity is A, we have adulthood, B, we have childhood, C, we have infancy, D, we have manhood, E, we have puberty. Now, what is that period in child development that marks the beginning of sexual maturity? When a child begins to, you know, experience some differences in their body and they begin to take note of different feelings and you know notions what is that state is it adulthood no is it childhood is it infancy manhood no the correct answer is puberty puberty that period is referred to as what puberty when a child begins to develop you know into um, knowing a whole lot about sexual maturity that period is referred to as what puberty so e Puberty is the correct answer. Unhealthy feeding habits can lead to, unhealthy feeding habits can lead to, A, we have Carter, B, we have cholera, C, we have eczema, D, we have kashwaka, E, we have malaria. When you don't eat healthy, you're going to go down with a deficiency disease called kashwaka. Kashwaka is the correct answer, okay? You don't get kata for not eating healthy. You don't get cholera for not eating healthy. You don't get eczema for not eating healthy. You don't get malaria for not eating healthy. But the deficiency disease that can lead to, that you can actually have by not eating healthy, by not feeding right, is quattroco. If you keep giving a toddler, you know, starchy food over time, the baby is going to um, go down with a deficiency disease called quattroco. So unhealthy feeding habits can lead to kashwako, especially in toddlers. Blood stain on clothes can be removed by using blood stain on clothes can be used by removing A, common salt, B, fresh tomato, 
C. Hydrogen peroxide. D. Lemon juice. E. Sour milk. Now, blood stain on coats can be removed by using C. Hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide can be used to remove blood stain on coats. It goes in to soften the protein in the blood stain and helps it loosen up so that it can be washed off and it gets clean. So hydrogen peroxide is suitable for removing blood stains on clothes. Let's look at this question. Hawkers are said to be close to consumers because they Hey, hawkers, we know who hawkers are. People that carry things on their head to sell, and then they go around from street to street. And then um, the question says, hawkers are said to be close to consumers because they A, deliver goods at doorsteps, B, dispatch goods in bulk, C, sell goods at very cheap prices, D, sell goods on higher purchase, E, sell one brand of goods. Now, hawkers are said to be close. Why are they said to be close to consumers? A, because they deliver goods at door steps. Now, that's why hawkers are close to consumers. They are not close to consumers because they dispatch goods in bulk. No, they don't have such facility to dispatch goods in bulk. And also, they are not close to consumers because they sell goods at very cheap prices. No. Okay, that can be one of it. Also, they don't or they are not close to consumers because they sell goods in higher purchase. That's not part of what they do. Also, they are not close because they sell one brand of goods. That's not why they are close. Now, the reason why they are close to consumers is because they deliver goods at the consumer's doorsteps. Now, you can just be in your home and you're hearing somebody saying, pop for sale, pop for sale. And oh, fine, I can buy it here rather than going to the market. And then they come close to you and then you buy Think for every other thing, you know, around your environment, hawkers, people that sell around you. They bring, they deliver goods at your doorstep. You don't have to go out to buy these things. So that's why they are said to be close to consumers because they bring the goods to your doorstep. A is the correct answer. Food utensils can become free from contamination by A, boiling, B, chilling, C, freezing, D, sanitizing, E, sterilizing. E is the correct answer to that question. Now, your food utensils can become free from contamination by sterilizing them. There are ways in which you can sterilize your food utensils so they don't get contaminated. So sterilization is the um, process by which you get um, food items from not being contaminated. So sterilization is the correct answer. Now, boiling is not left out. You can actually boil some of our utensils to curb the growth of microbes on our utensils, but sterilization is the paramount. Now, let's look at the next question. An example of a vegetable stain, an example of a vegetable stain is, an example of a vegetable stain is, A, we have blood, B, we have ink, C, we have juice, D, we have paint, E, we have rust. Now, a type of vegetable stain. What's an example of a vegetable stain? We have blood. Is blood a vegetable? No. Ink? No. Juice? Juice is a vegetable. You can be... Juice is an example of a vegetable stain. It's an example of a vegetable stain. When taking your... Veg, um, your vegetable juice and all of that, it can drop on you and it could be referred to as a vegetable stain. So an example of a vegetable stain is juice. So C is the correct answer. Snacks are different from main meals because they are. Snacks are different from main meals because they are A, heavier in portion size, B, made up of more curses, C, more casually served. D, more nutritious. E, richer in protein content. A, heavier in portion size. B, made up of more curses. C, more casually served. D, 
more nutritious e richer in protein content now snacks are different because from main meals because they are see they are more casually served okay there are no formalities to serving snacks like you do with your main meals main meals you have to go with a planning a process but for snack they don't have to go through that so they are casually served that's more or less like a different difference between snack and main meal. So C is the correct answer. They are more casually served. Freezing is to fish as sterilization is to A, we have lettuce, B, we have milk, C, we have orange, D, we have rice, E, we have yam. Now, freezing is to fish, we know that. That's to cut microbes. Now, sterilization is to what? B, milk is the correct answer, milk. Sterilization is to milk. Now, why do you have to sterilize your milk? You know, this is to um, kill microbes by, you know, going through a process of boiling to keep microbes in milk. So, sterilization is to milk, as freezing is to what? Fish. So, B is the correct answer, which is milk. Which of the following fibers is easily attacked by moths? Which of the following fibers is easily attacked by moths? Okay, uh, fibers, uh, clothing, which of these, you know, is um, easily attacked by moths? A, we have acetate, B, we have cotton, C, we have um, linen, D, we have linen, E, we have wool. Now, which of these is easily attacked by moats? Wool, E, option E, is the correct answer. Wool is easily attacked by moats. They are easily infested by moats. So, E is the correct answer. The cleaning agent that removes dirt by liquefying and holding it in suspension is a slash a a cleaning agent that removes dirt by liquefying and holding it in suspension is a and a we have option a we have abrasive b we have acid c we have detergent d we have polished solvent e we have solvent now, which is the correct answer? A cleaning agent that removes dead by liquefying and holding it in suspension is A or an C, detergent. Detergent is that cleaning agent that removes dead by liquefying or holding it in suspension. So detergent is the correct answer to that question. So the option C is the correct answer. Now, let's look at this question. Which of the following is a snack? Which of the following is a snack? We have omelette, we have popcorn, we have porridge, we have pudding, and then we have salad. Which of the following is a snack? Is it omelette? Is it popcorn? Yes. You know, popcorn sounds snack. So B, popcorn is the correct answer. Popcorn is a type of snack that we used to, you know, to... Um, Win, um, win off, just sit back and eat it, you know, just to keep them out busy. So it's a snack. So popcorn is a snack. Let's look at the next question. Which of the following is not a natural resource? Which of the following is not a natural resource? You know, one of the questions I said we should look out for, the topics we should look out for, I said resources, you know, in resources you get to find, you know, natural resources and other resources. Now, this, they're asking which of the following is not a natural resource? Which of the following is not a natural resource? A, we have air. B, we have house. C, we have land. D, we have plants. E, we have water. Air, of course, is a natural resource. Housing, house. House is not a natural resource. Land is a natural resource. D is um, plants. 
plant is a natural resource, water is a natural resource, but for house, house is not a natural resource, but natural resources are used to build a house, so B is the um, answer to that question, house. House is not a natural resource, not withstanding that natural resources can be used in building a house, but that doesn't make it a, a, a natural resource. So house is the correct answer. An angle of 45 degree across the lengthwise and crosswise sections of a grain is an angle of 45 degree across the lengthwise and crosswise sections of a grain is A, we have fiber, B, we have the right side, C, we have the wrong side, D, we have the true bias, E, we have the yarn. Now, an angle of 45 degree across the lengthwise and crosswise section of a grain is referred to as what? D, the true bias. The true bias. Now, this is the correct answer because that is what it does. An angle of 45 degree across the lengthwise and crosswise section of a grain is often referred to as what? The true bias. So, making our option D, true bias, as the correct answer. Now, let's look at this question. Invitation to a former party. Invitation to a former party is best done through when you need to invite someone to a formal party. What's the best way to invite the person? What medium should you use to invite the person? A, we have billboard. B, we have card. C, we have flyer. D, we have handbill. E, we have magazine. Invitation to formal party is best done true. B, that's card, card. Now, the traditional way or method of inviting guests to a former party is done through card. But today we have our uh, e um, measures, electronic ways of sending invite, but not leaving out this traditional method of, or way of sending invites. Okay, there's some people you don't just send invites through Facebook, WhatsApp, and these other mediums. You have to go formally and hand over, especially if it's a wedding card, you have to or a wedding invitation, you have to go using a card to do the invitation. And so for some other personalities, you know, you don't just do it um, online or do an e-card. You have to do a physical card. Okay, invitations to former parties best done through a card, an invitation card. So B is the what correct answer. Okay, B board. You don't do invitation to former party by doing a B board. So B. Option A is not, uh, is not an option at all. Then C, flyer. Flyer is not an option for invitation to form a party. Fly, it's, also an, an, um, it's also a process or a medium for invitation, but not to a formal party. Flyers are given to notify people for events, you know, programs that are upcoming. Same is applicable to handbill. Okay, these are all mediums also for invitations, but not applicable to a formal party. So this makes card the right answer to this question. Let's look at the next question. Which of the following foods is cooked in hot oil? Which of the following foods is cooked in hot oil? We have coated fish. We have corn pudding. C, we have jollof rice. D, we have stewed bean. E, we have yam pottage. Now, which of the following food is cooked in hot oil? A, we have coated fish. Now, coated fish is the correct answer to that question. We immerse our fish into hot oil, okay, to cook it. We don't do that with corn pudding, okay? Corn pudding is basically made through steam or boiling hot water. Now, jollof rice, you know, the process of cooking jollof rice is not done in hot oil. And then steamed stewed bean is not done or cooked in hot oil. Same is applicable to yam for, um, pottage. It's not done using hot oil. So coated fish is um, one food which is cooked in hot oil. So A is the correct answer. An example of a secondary need in the family is, an example of a secondary need in the family is, A, we have car, B, we have clothing, 
C, we have food, D, we have health care, E, we have shelter. An example of a secondary need. Now, this takes us back to uh, family needs, goals, and standards. Now, when you talk about needs, we have the primary and secondary needs. So the primary need has to do with those needs that are very essential to, to us. We need them for survival. If we don't get them, we can, we, there's a possibility one can die. That's food, um, clothing, shelter. These are primary needs. Now, secondary needs are those needs that are not really you know, necessary for survival. You can do without them. So which of these is that example of a secondary need here with the options we have here? Now, A, car. Is there what correct answer? It's a secondary need. The family can do without it. You know, same as vacation, the family can do without it. It is not a primary need. So car is the correct answer because it's an example of a secondary need. Now let's look at the next question. The process of treating cotton with caustic soda to make it lustrous is called the process of treating cotton with caustic soda to make it lustrous is called A, we have carbonization, B, we have dejuming, C, we have drip drying, D, we have glazing, E, we have mercerization. Now, the process of treating cotton with caustic acid to make it lustrous is referred to as E, mercerization. Okay? So, E is the correct answer, mercerization. That process of treating cotton with caustic acid to give it this lustrous look, you know, and um, beautiful look is called mesterization. So E is the correct answer to that question. Which of the following is exclusively a facial cosmetic? Which of the following is exclusive a facial cosmetic? Now, this is exclusively, okay? It's only used for the face. That's what the question implies. A, we have deodorant, B, we have mascara, E, C, we have, sorry, pomade, D, we have powder, E, we have shampoo. Now, deodorant is used to um, help with um, body odor and perspiration. Mascara, mascara is exclusively a facial cosmetic. It is used for uh, eyebrow to give it, an, give it this black effect and make it, you know, um, standing and firm makes it look firm. So mascara is exclusive in facial cosmetics. Pomade is used for the body. It can be used any other um, any other part of, for any part any other part of the body. Same for your powder. You can use your powder for your face. It's not exclusively for the face. And then you can use it for every, some other parts. You know, you can, some people some persons drop them on their armpits, and you know, for other purposes also. Then shampoo for the hair. Shampoo is exclusive for the hair, just as mascara is exclusive what for the hair. So the correct answer to this question is B. Mascara is exclusively a facial what cosmetic. The most suitable packaging material for cupcakes is the most suitable packaging material for cupcakes is. A, we have cellophane bag, B, we have foil paper, C, we have old newspaper, D, we have paper box, E, we have picnic bag. Now, which of these is a suitable packaging material for cupcakes? Oh, yes, D is the correct answer, paper box. Now, why do you need to use a paper box for your cupcakes? It keeps it firm, you know, it doesn't make it to look um, not neat. Your paper box helps your cupcakes fit in and they keep looking beautiful with all the designs. But if you use something other than your um, paper box, yes, you can use foil paper, but it's going to get smashed. Or if you use an old paper, newspaper, it's not healthy. Or a picnic bag, a picnic bag too will get it smashed. But a paper box will keep your cakes, cupcakes firm and still make it look beautiful. So the correct answer to that question is D, which is your paper box. Okay, let's look at this question. The first set of teeth babies develop is, it's the milk teeth. And now, as they grow up, the first set of teeth is referred to as what? Well, the milk teeth. That's what they cooperate. So as they tend to grow older, they tend to change into this other 
set of teeth. So, but the first set of teeth babies develop is referred to as what? The milk teeth. So, option C is the correct answer. Woolen material is suitable for making sweaters. Okay, now, woolen material is suitable for making sweaters because they have, you know, this ability to retain heat, you know, to insulate and um, make you or keep you warm. So they are not suitable for bed sheets, they are not suitable for blankets, they are not suitable for hand towels or either for napkins. They are suitable for making materials such as sweater, you know, baby clothing that can retain heat when the weather is um, cold. So woolen materials are suitable for making sweater because of their ability to retain um, heat and keep and to keep one warm or an individual warm. Traits are passed from parents to offspring through the genes. Traits are passed from parents to offspring through gene. Okay, traits are not passed through um, from parents to offspring through diets, through discipline, or through education, or through inheritance. It is passed from parents to offspring through the gene. You just find out that you're doing or you're acting like mommy you're acting like daddy you're acting like them in one way or the other now these traits are passed through the gene from the process on which you were con um, from the process of re um, when you were conceived until you know you were born now these traits can be passed through um, a process what called gene from the parents to the children their offspring so D is the correct answer. Traits are passed from parents to offspring through the genes. Now let's look at the next question. Contamination of food can be avoided by A, allowing pests in the kitchen, B, keeping waste being close to cooking area, C, leaving food open on a shelf, D, piling dirty plates on the sink overnight, E, washing utensils as soon as they are used contamination of food can be avoided by can you avoid contamination by lying pests in the kitchen no everywhere is going to be contaminated keeping waste being to um where you cook of course not contamination of food would definitely occur leaving food open in a shelf contamination will occur piling dirty plates on a sink overnight contamination of course will occur now contamination of food can be avoided by doing what e washing utensils as soon as they are used this way you're going to curb the effect of contamination or my, the growth of microbes in the kitchen so that way you're going to be healthy so e is washing utensils as soon as they are used don't store them don't keep them for a later time wash them immediately they are used Sometimes if you even keep them for a longer period of time, it tends to stay, um, it stays harder. But immediately you use them and you wash them off. You know, it's still soft, it's still pliable, you can wash them. But if you keep them, you get lazy and then you get them contaminated. So E is the correct answer. Washing utensils as soon as they are used. Pedicure is for feet while manicure is for Manicure is for the hand, okay? Pedicure has to do with the grooming and taking care of the feet and the toes, while manicure has to do with grooming and taking care of what? The hand and the fingernails, okay? So manicure is for the hand. So C is the correct answer, not for the eyebrow or your hair, the scalp or toenails. Okay, pedicure has to do with the grooming and care of the feet and the toenails. So the correct answer is C. Manicure is for grooming or taking care of the hand and what the finger nails. That's what manicure is used is for. Okay, we have a diagram here. Now, the clothing accessory represented below should be stored in slash on a, we have boxes, B, we have drawers, C, we have racks, D, we have tables, E, we have wardrobes. So where do you store this diagram here? What does it look like? It looks like your sandals or your shoe. Okay, yes. So where do we store them? Which, um, 
where is where is suitable for us to store this accessory, this clothing accessory? We should store them on or in our racks. Okay, you put our shoes on racks so that they can be taken away from the floor and they are placed beautifully. Okay, racks are uh, suitable places where we are to keep our shoes and our sandals. That's where we keep them. So C is the correct answer, racks. Let's move on to the next question. A child is immunized against measles at what age? What month, sorry? A child is immunized against measles at dash months. A, we have two, we have three. C, we have five. D, we have seven. E, we have nine. Okay, so at what month should a child be immunized against measles? E is the correct answer. A child is immunized against measles at nine months. So you have to do this at nine months so as to what? Prevent the child being infected. Now, notwithstanding, a child at a later age or later age or later time can get infected with measles. But because the child has been immunized, it will not um, cause more harm to the child. It will not be harmful or cause more threat to the child because the child has been immunized. But when a child is not immunized, it could cause more um, harm than good because measles is not such a good um, kind of uh, disease that should be infected, that a child should be infected with or an individual. So these vaccinations are very, very important. So it is given at nine months of birth. When a child is nine months, they are being vaccinated for what? Um, measles, against the measles. So E is the correct answer. The traditional method of preserving tomatoes is by A, blow drying, B, canning, C, freezing, D, smoking, E, sun drying. The traditional method of preserving tomatoes is by A, blow drying, B, canning. Yes, we can can our tomatoes. That's, way, that's one way to preserve our tomatoes. Also by freezing them, freezing, you know, putting them in the freezer for you know, a period of time. That way you are preserving it. But we're looking at the word traditional, okay? Now, sun drying is a traditional method of what? Preserving tomatoes and some other vegetables. You just cut them out and then you put them. And when it's time to use them, you just get them, grind them and then you use them, turn them into a paste or puree them and use. So sun drying is the traditional method of preserving tomatoes. So E is the correct answer. Preservation means, preservation means A, buying items in large quantities, B, cooking to conserve essential nutrients, C, handling food in a hygienic manner, D, keeping food in good condition for a long period, E, storing in a suitable container. Now, what does preservation mean? Is it buying food in large quantities? That's not preservation. That could be referred to as what? Bulk purchasing. Now, cooking to preserve essential nutrients, that's not the reason why we preserve food. That's for cooking. Now, handling food in a hygienic manner, that's not it. That's not it. That's not kitchen hygiene. That's, not, that's what that refers to. Keeping food in good condition for a long period can be said to be what? Preservation. When you keep food for a long period of time, you know, in, in a good condition, that can be said to be preservation. You're preserving the food. So D is the correct answer. D is the correct answer. Preservation means keeping food in good condition for a long period of time. Let's look at the next question. Which of the following indigenous cosmetics is used as eyeliner? Which of the following indigenous cosmetics is used as eyeliner? Now, this is going to take you back to um, cosmetics and deodorants. Now, we looked... Um, okay, I'm, I'm going to take you back. So, if you've not seen some of our videos, you have to go back to look at some of our videos because some of all of these 
things we were talking about and some of these topics have been treated in our previous videos. So you should have to go back and then um, watch our previous videos so you can, you know, be abreast or be on top of your game. Now, indigenous cosmetics, back to the question. Indigenous cosmetics are those cosmetics that are peculiar to Africans or Nigerians per se. Now, this indigenous cosmetic is strictly useful at, or as an eyeliner. Which of them? A, we have Edo, we have Lily, we have Inzu, we have Tiro, and then we have Ihu. Now, which of these? All of these are our indigenous cosmetics that we use here to beautify us before the invent of Zara and all of these other Mary Kay and all of that. So these are our indigenous um, cosmetics that we have in Africa and in Nigeria as well. So which of these is used for eyelining purposes? So D is the correct answer. Tiro. Tiro is used. Aside for beautification purposes, that's why I believe that it has some, you know, me um, medical or medicinal effects to the eyes as well. So aside um, being used for fashion purposes, it also has some um, medicinal or medical effects to the eyes, just as is being said. So Chiro is the correct answer. Now here we have a diagram here. The measurement taken over the parts labeled A, this part labeled A in the diagram below is the measurement taken over the part labeled A in the diagram below is this part is referred to as what we have a across back b we have across front c we have bust d we have half length e we have hip so you have to take cognizance of the question you have to take a closer look read properly and accurately to understand what they mean. I'm going to take the question again. I said the measurement taken over the part labeled A in the diagram below is referred to as what? Okay, we have across back, we have across front, bust, half length, and hip. So the correct answer here is what? Across front. Now when you take measurements for ladies or women with, from this part labeled A is referred to as what? Across front. Okay, so this has to do with measurements, body measurements, bodies, and all of that. So this is referred to as what? Across front, when you take measurements from this part, labeled A. So the answer is B. So across front is the correct answer. Okay, so we have come to the end of the revision class. I want you to read up, go through this video as much as possible so you can get acquainted and you're going to be doing amazingly well in your forthcoming exams. Bye for now.